Congressman Frost. Hey, Frosty. how you doing? Good to see I'm you. Gonna be too. So good to see Thanks you. Thanks for spending some time with me no, this morning. Of course, of course. You want to grab some coffee? Yeah, let's do it. So do you typically make coffee at home, or are you a person who gets it on the way to work? I get it on the way to work. My girlfriend's a barista, or she used to be, so oh. she makes great coffee. Mine, not so much. So what's your typical order when you come to a coffee shop like I this? I do a latte. I do iced vanilla latte with oat milk. The same thing every time. I and need the oat always milk. iced, even if it's freezing cold outside? I don't care how cold it is. I'll eat ice cream when it's cold outside. Me too. I love ice yeah. cream anytime. Congressman. You kind of just moved to Washington, D.C. Yep, yep. When you're here on the weekends, what is your typical weekend morning like? So I'm usually never here on the weekends, but if I am, I'll wake up in the morning. I go to this bagel place. What do you order there? So I get a plain bagel with eggs, cheese, and a latke on it. And then I ask them to put their, like, fresh crema or whatever on mm -hmm. it, too. And that's my, that's my meal. I'm that, pescatarian, so no That meat. sounds pretty good, though. <laughs> yep. Do you together. have, when, when you go into your refrigerator, <laughs> is there anything in there? Or are you pretty much an eat out kind of guy? Here, I have a Brita and <laughs> hot sauce in my That's fridge. That's it. That's it. What do you do on a weekend morning if you're here? Usually work. I'll usually like sit down and get some work done, answer some emails. Um, if, if it's a light morning, Again, I'm never here on the weekends, but if I am, if I have other colleagues here, maybe we'll try to like go and get like brunch or something like that. But usually I'm working, doing an interview, anything like that. But weekend evenings, if I'm here for a weekend, I'll usually try to go see a concert um, because I won't have anything super early the next morning. So when you're not working, is there a show you're binging right now? I just got done with Better Call Saul. Oh, that's yeah. a good one. And then before that, we had finished Mad Men. Or it was our. It was my girlfriend and I's third rewatch. It's my favorite Three, show. Wow, Mad Men is. What What do you yeah. love so much about it? Everything, everything. I mean, you know, it's just like it's like peak television. But I think you know, it's everything from the the office drama to the acting, the writing, the conversations, but also the aesthetics. You know, when I first watched it, I actually bought this suit after I watched Mad <laughs> Men because I wanted like a Mad Men mid century modern. You're the yeah. first generation Z. Member of Congress, you're probably tired of hearing people say that. <laughs> but I don't know if you know this, the average age of a member of Congress is 58. Yep. So you're a little bit younger than that? A, li a little bit, just a little. Just a little bit. Have you experienced any moments of ex that age gap, uh, living that age gap? Yeah, something funny. I gave a, a short speech uh, to the Democratic caucus. It was like one of my first days. And I brought up Jim Clyburn's fish fry that he does that I've been to. <laughs> And I jokingly referred to it as the Coachella of the South. And I got half <laughs> of the room laughed. Did people look at you thinking, the Coachella? What is that? Yeah, yeah. Half of the room laughed. Half of the room was like, you know, chuckles but question marks. And I had a ton of members text me and come up to me like, what, what's the Coachella? So I got a good opportunity to explain a big part of, you know, pop culture. <laughs> Honestly, I feel really respected by the caucus. Everyone's been so helpful. Members across the entire spectrum have reached out. And uh, I feel like I'm at home, right? We have a family and we're, we're fighting this fight in a moment where it's really difficult. Um, and I don't see myself as the representative of a whole generation. You know, I don't sit down and go, let me write some Gen Z legislation. <laughs> let me wear my Gen Z yeah, t-shirt. What's Gen Z thinking today? But I show up as my 100% authentic self. And that identity is a huge part of it. So you've talked a lot about making politics cool again. And you're a huge music fan. Yeah. How do you do that? How do you cross over music and politics yeah. and make it more accessible to young people? For me, it's about this whole concept of bridging the gap between cool and consciousness. And I think, you know, I'm a drummer myself and bringing our artists in, I think, give us a good medium to do that. I think about movements like March for Our Lives, for mm -hmm. instance. We had insane youth voter turnout, the highest youth voter turnout in a midterm. We had insane voter registration. And what did that was a movement that changed the culture of our country, right? I remember, you know, that point. It was cool to go to the march. It was cool to register to vote. People were asking each other, did you go vote? And it's like, how do we replicate that? How do we make this fight part of our culture? And I think our artists and, uh, and the arts in general are really a good medium for that. And, and one of the things you're really bringing to the table is your activism mm -hmm. on gun safety, yep. which you, you became an activist at 15. Yep. Uh, how has it impacted your argument on the need for gun safety, the fact that you grew up doing active shooter drills, something that yeah. people 20 years ago didn't live through? It just makes the issue kind of at the forefront of everything I think about, right? Um, 
I ended up getting involved at 15 after the Sandy Hook shooting because I didn't want to get shot in school. Three years later, I'd survive an instance of gun violence myself in downtown Orlando. A few months before that instance, we had Pulse Nightclub where we lost 49 lives in the heart of Orlando. And so this issue is one that I'm, it's constantly on my mind because I think it's an issue that defines a generation. And a generation should not be defined by, you know, shootings and mass shootings. Um, and when I think about what connects Gen Z, Democrat, Republican, no matter who you are, it is that trauma, a trauma-filled generation. Now, one of the things that perplexes me is the fact that nine, eight, 70, 80, 90% of the country wants to see changes on gun laws, whether it's red flag laws or universal background checks yeah. or just additional steps to make them safer. But nothing happens or feels like it feels like nothing is happening in Washington. Yeah. As somebody who came comes as an activist now is a congressman what do you attribute that to it's interesting you know the word bipartisanship is supposed to mean what everyone can agree on right and when you look at gun violence legislation like let's take universal background checks most democrats are for it most republicans are for it and most nra members are for it too so that's bipartisan but in the halls of congress on this issue bipartisanship takes a different meaning and what it means in Congress is what the NRA is okay with. And they're not okay with it. And that's why it hasn't passed yet. And so we see that these corporate interests, like the NRA, which they don't advocate for everyday gun owners. They, every day, they advocate for everyday gun manufacturers. It's a lobbying front for corporations that produce these weapons. And so it's important to realize what these dynamics are. And then you see, oh, now I understand why there hasn't been anything done. And we, we had the bipartisan Safer Communities Act. Yeah, that was it was a step forward, for sure. It was a step forward. Is that everything we need? No. Um, is it a step forward? Yes. Will it save lives? Yes. And behind every number, there's a person. So if you pass legislation that saves one, two, three, four, five lives a day, it's, I think that's worth it. We still have a lot more to do, though. So another one of the issues you've talked about a lot is affordable housing. And you've experienced this yourself, and you were very vocal about this, or you were upfront yeah. about it, which is your own experience with trying to find an apartment here mm -hmm. in Washington as a new member of Congress. So yeah. how has that worked out for you so far? Well, I have, I'll let everyone know I have a place to live now, so. It's good to hear. <laughs> yeah, I, I joke around. People know me for two reasons, being Gen Z and not being able to get an apartment in D.C. And the top question I get asked is, have you found a place to live? So everyone. People are worried about I you. Know, I know. My mom's yeah. asking. No, no. <laughs> and I'm now on national news, letting everyone know I found a place. Now it's time to work on everybody else. You know, we have the worst affordable housing crisis in my district, Orlando, Central Florida, per capita in the country. So there's a lot of work that needs to be done, and I do believe housing is a human right. I really believe everyone. Because your challenge, and which is the way it's so powerful, you spoke about it. You're a member of Congress, which people think, oh, you've got it all. Good. You've yeah. got it all settled for you, and yeah. you had trouble because you didn't have the credit rated ne yep. needing, needed mm -hmm. in order to rent an apartment. Exactly, and so we have to look at what are the barriers to entry for renting. I mean, I want to talk about owning. But we can't even get there if people aren't even able to start renting or even get, in a, get, you know, get a roof over their heads. My generation is on track to be the generation that owns the least amount of assets. We're talking housing. We're talking a car, right? And so we have to figure out how are we helping people build wealth. But to build wealth, you got to have a place to live, right? For me, that's like the bare minimum. The other way you got into politics is but through music. I mean, music yeah. has been a big motivator for you or a big part of your life. Yeah. Now, you uh, were in the, a band that played at the 2012 uh, inauguration yep. for Barack yep. Obama, yep. where he is on camera dancing not very well, I think I can say. <laughs> I'm hey, sure he was he's... trying his best. Have we you seen it. the video of him I dancing have. to your music? I think I've seen that video maybe 400 times. Oh, I'm sure. <laughs> did you get? It? Did everyone text it to you when it when it oh, yeah. went well, online? Well, when it happened, we saw him dancing. So if you see the video of us performing, you see us start to freak out and point because yeah. we see him dancing, and. That, that was such an incredible experience for me. Well, I know you're a big fan of vinyl records, I hear. Yep. My uh, dad owns an online vinyl record store. Wow. Yeah, so in our house, or in his house, he has like six, 7,000 records. It's called Uncle Pat's Records. That yeah. is cool. Yeah. Has his business increased over the last it couple It has. Of years? So he's a full-time musician, right? And so he plays live and stuff. And during COVID, his business got hit hard. And during COVID lockdown, he really started his online record store business. So, yeah, he's doing his thing. And, you know, we have a record uh, player in our office in Longworth. So he's lent me a ton of records. We were going to go check out a vinyl record store. Ooh, I'm excited. time to do that. Yeah, let's, let's do, do it. it. 
So I know you love vinyl record stores, yep. and this is one you've been wanting to check out. Yeah, I've been wanting to go here. My chief, who's lived here for a while, told me to come here, so excited to be here. So when you come into a store like this, what's the first thing you do? I start out like one of the first bins I see or first area. So, Deciding where to begin. Yeah, I'll come over here and I just start looking and we'll just look through and see if there's any artwork that I like or anything that catches my eye. Is there an album that you are looking for, the holy grail of albums? It changes a lot depending on what I'm looking at. I've been looking for a specific pressing of uh, Pet Sounds. Uh, by the Beach Boys that I haven't been able to find. So I'm always kind of on the lookout for that. One of the cool things about vinyl you don't really get with streaming these days is like you could really appreciate the artwork. And it's kind of, it's I mean, it's the first thing you see. Look is that what attracts you to vinyl over just streaming music? The artwork and the experience of it? I would say, I would say. Just, it's a whole thing, right? And it really, it forces people to appreciate kind of a whole body of work versus kind of picking the, the song you like or the single you like. This is my favorite That's your album. Guy. <laughs> this is my guy. So typically, like, you know, you'll you'll get an album here. This one's not like brand new. So a lot of people will listen to it, they'll listen for skips and stuff like that. And Before sure. they buy it. Yeah. So they'll try it out a little bit. Exactly. And do you I know you love Stevie Wonder. Do mm -hmm. you have one Stevie Wonder song that when you are feeling like you need some Stevie Wonder, you play that song? It's actually of this album. I would say probably knocks me off my feet. But I'm, every song of this album, I've gone through a phase with. So, you know, this is great. The story of your life right there on the album. Soundtrack of my life. Do you remember what your first concert was? I do. It's the Wiggles. Really? <laughs> yeah. What was your second concert? Uh, my second concert was um, Maynard Ferguson, who is a trumpet player. He passed away years ago. Another show that I really remember young was seeing um, Brian Wilson on the Smile Tour, mm -hmm. um, which was awesome, changed my life. I think I was the youngest person in the room and the blackest person in the room, <laughs> but it was still great, <laughs> you know, and it was a, it was You a still time. may be one of the youngest and yeah, one of the blackest yeah, in the room yeah, if you right. go to a concert of his. Exactly, yeah, but, um, you know, that music is what I grew up on, changed my life. Thanks for spending right. the day with yeah, me. So of you course. have coffee and you have your vinyl record. Yep. And what about Saturday night? What's your next Saturday night plan if you're in Washington, D.C.? If I'm in Washington, D.C., I'll probably be at a concert.